Thomas Pocklington Trust logo. What do we see too? How the world looks at vision impaired children and young people. Hello, my name is Masuma Ali and I am an engagement manager at Thomas Pocklington Trust. Following on from our video, what do we see? How the world looks to blind and partially sighted people. We are proud to present what do we see too? How the world looks to vision impaired children and young people. This video will provide information on five of the most common conditions affecting vision impaired children and young people in the UK today. We have simulated each condition in an educational setting and used augmented reality to show how things typically look to those living with nystagmus, retinitis pigmentosa, cataracts, retinopathy of prematurity and optic atrophy. Children are also affected by CVI where visual problems are caused by damage to the brain rather than issues with the eyes themselves. Every child will experience a condition differently and for some vision will fluctuate throughout the day and can be affected by levels of tiredness and emotional state. You can watch this as one continuous video or select the condition or conditions of greatest interest to you by using the video bookmark links. At the end we will provide links on where to find out more about the conditions and the work of Thomas Pocklington Trust. The first condition we would like to show you is nystagmus. Nystagmus is uncontrolled constant movement and flickering of the eyes. This can be from side to side, up and down, in circular motion or a combination of these. It affects how clearly a person can see things. As you can see, items and faces at a distance are out of resolution but can be focused on when they are clearer. Infantile nystagmus develops when the eyes or parts of the brain that process information from the eyes do not develop properly or are damaged. For many children, it is not known why this occurs. People with nystagmus can have variable vision throughout the day and from situation to situation. The most common symptoms of nystagmus are inability to see detail clearly from further than one meter away. This causes difficulty in seeing words on a whiteboard, recognizing faces, reading wall mounted signs and text, particularly in shared books or on screens. Some children with nystagmus will have a flickering movement as they try to focus on an object as shown here with the mobile phone. Nystagmus can cause reduced speed and depth perception which can impact on balance, general mobility and the ability to participate in playground games and physical education. As seen here, glare is a common issue for those with nystagmus and albinism which can cause a whiting out of the environment. This can be particularly problematic on sunny days and from reflections on light surfaces including desks and whiteboards. Almost all people with albinism have nystagmus. There is no cure for nystagmus. It can't be corrected by glasses or contact lenses, but with the right support, children with the condition can go on to lead full and independent lives. To support a child with nystagmus, let the child hold or get as close as they need so that they can see as much detail as possible. Accommodate the null point, the head position at which eye movement is reduced and vision is slightly improved. Make sure all learning materials are adapted and modified with the child's chosen print size, simplified diagrams and preferred paper colour or filter. Consider work sampling or giving additional time to complete tasks. Make sure any glasses and contact lenses 
prescribed for other conditions such as long or short-sightedness are worn so that vision is the best it can be. Avoid exposure to bright light and glare where albinism is present. Retinitis pigmentosa Retinitis pigmentosa, or RP for short, is the most common type of rod cone dystrophy. This is an umbrella term describing a range of eye conditions linked by problems with the rod and cone cells on the retina at the back of the eye. RP is often caused by faults or misprints in the part of the genetic code responsible for how the eyes work and often presents during childhood and into young adulthood. Children and young people with RP will start to notice their vision is blurred at the edges and increasingly poor in dark or dimly lit environments. This is called night blindness. They may also start to experience increased sensitivity to light on sunny days or in brightly lit environments. Over time, deterioration progresses inwards to affect the cone cells around the center of the retina. When this happens, the child or young person may start to notice blurring or hazing in their central vision with colors becoming dimmer or less sharp. While deterioration is ongoing, it happens in stages, so a young person will have to live with different levels of deterioration. As you will see from this simulation, usually when full deterioration has occurred, some central vision will remain, though this may reduce to a small central tunnel or dot, making it difficult to see most things. There is currently no cure or treatment which can slow down or stop RP from getting worse. Things that can help children and young people with the condition include Making sure glasses, sunglasses, contact lenses and low vision aids are worn, magnifying or increasing both the size and spacing between words in printed documents. Ensuring learning materials are positioned in their line of vision. Reducing glare and making good use of colour contrast. Cataracts Cataracts occurs when changes in the lens of the eyes cause it to become less transparent. There are two types of childhood cataracts, juvenile cataracts which develop in childhood and infantile cataracts which are present in babies from birth or in the first few months of life. The focus here is on infantile and juvenile cataracts, collectively known as childhood cataracts. At first, changes to the sight may be difficult to notice. But as the cataracts worsen, vision becomes increasingly misty and cloudy. Common causes of cataracts include a genetic fault that causes the lens to develop abnormally, infections picked up by the mother during pregnancy like rubella and chickenpox, an injury to the eye during birth or childhood, the presence of other genetic conditions such as Down syndrome, Infantile cataracts can stop a child from ever developing vision. Early detection is crucial and why every child in the UK should have their eyes checked for cataracts in the first three days of life and again at six to eight weeks old. Cataracts can also cause nystagmus and in some cases a squint can develop, causing the eyes to point in different directions. Surgery to remove the cloudy lens or lenses is the most common treatment and performed when the impact on vision is significant. In many instances, surgery will replace the cloudy lens with an artificial one, but infants and young children are left without a lens until the eye has matured enough to have an artificial implant. When the cataracts has been removed, this condition is now called aphakia, which is blurring of the vision. This is demonstrated here. Following surgery, children are likely to need prescribed glasses or contact lenses to correct vision, whether they have an artificial lens implant or not. This is because they are no longer able to focus properly on their own. Here, we have simulated the improvement in vision once the cataracts has been removed and vision is corrected with glasses. 
Quite often, glasses are heavy and uncomfortable because of the level of prescription required. Retinopathy of prematurity. Retinopathy of prematurity, or ROP, occurs when a baby is born too early and the blood vessels on the retina do not develop completely. The retina grows new blood vessels to compensate, but these grow abnormally, leak, or cause scarring. This restricts vision and increases the risk of permanent vision loss. As you will see here, floaters, flashes, or blind spots start to develop. This causes other complications and makes children more susceptible to permanent vision loss. ROP is more likely to occur in babies that were born before the 28th week of pregnancy, had a low birth weight of less than 1,500 grams, required oxygen treatment soon after birth. Many children with ROP due to premature birth may also have cerebral visual impairment, CVI. While there is only one type of ROP, the impact on vision is best understood on a spectrum of a five-point scale reflecting levels of severity. At stages 1 to 2, the impact is less severe and in most cases the blood vessels will heal themselves without treatment. Regular monitoring and checkups are crucial and can stop ROP from worsening beyond stages 1 and 2. If the condition develops to stage 3 and new blood vessels start to grow, laser treatment or injections can stop them causing further damage. At stage 4, the retina becomes partially detached, increasing the level of vision loss. Partial detachment can cause problems with the detailed vision required to recognize faces, read books or whiteboards, and if it progresses, will affect the central part of the retina. Individuals will experience a narrowing of the vision, which can result in complete vision loss. At stage 5, the retina becomes completely detached, causing severe vision impairment or blindness. At stage 4 and 5, surgery can help to reattach or refix the retina to the back of the eye. Things that can help a child with the condition in a learning environment include using a sloped board to position and read books, using a reading window to help maintain focus on lines of text as they work through textbooks or documents, using high colour contrast to help distinguish between objects and text, allowing time to orientate with the environments and familiarise with new ones. Optic atrophy Optic atrophy, or optic neuropathy, as it is sometimes known, is a genetic condition that usually starts in childhood and causes vision to deteriorate slowly over time and into young adulthood. As you will see, there is decrease in visual acuity or clarity and sharpness of the central vision, which has become misty. The visual defect spreads outwards from the centre. The person will experience decreased colour perception and problems with glare. Optic atrophy is caused by mutations in specific genes that prevent cells in the retina from producing. These mutations cause cells to deform and die. The optic nerve slowly wastes away and can no longer transmit visual information to the brain. There are numerous types of optic atrophy depending on the genes affected. Optic atrophy type 1 is the most common and the focus of this video. Optic atrophy usually affects both eyes. The severity of vision loss varies widely from nearly normal vision to complete blindness. There is no effective treatment to cure optic atrophy. In certain cases, early diagnosis and treatment of the underlying causes can help prevent further damage and sight loss. In a learning environment, the following adjustments are important for a child with optic atrophy. Use of enlarged and well-contrasted text. Positioning them close to any objects including a whiteboard that needs to be seen. 
reduction of glare from windows or light surfaces. Clear markings and signage on stairs, floors and walls. We hope you found this video interesting and gave you an insight into how the world typically looks for many vision impaired children and young people. We also hope it will help inform the work you do in education or in support of vision impaired children and young people. For children and young people with the conditions shown in this video, support from specialists such as qualified teachers of the visually impaired, QTVI, habilitation or rehabilitation workers, low vision and healthcare professionals can make a huge difference. This video should be used in addition to any professional support. To find out more about Thomas Pocklington Trust and our work in the areas of education, employment, engagement and technology, visit our website pocklington-trust.org.uk To find out more about the eye conditions in this video, please visit rnib.org.uk forward slash i dash health forward slash i dash conditions. CVI Scotland is a great source of information for CVI. Visit cviscotland.org. If you think this video would be useful to other professionals or parents, please do share it with them. With thanks to Nystagmus Network RNIB and Dr. Lola Salibo at Great Ormond Street Hospital. And a huge thank you to the stars at North Bromsgrove High School and Sixth Form in Worcester. Thomas Pocklington Trust logo.